Wow. Did I see something interesting today? I saw, well, this happened a few days ago, and they were rioting, um, and one of the white supremacists got clocked. He got his head, his gore, his gore cracked. And, um, well, listen, y'all. <sighs> Let me just start by saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Yes, yes, yes. I'm in a hurry to say this because a lot of people would think, um, this guy was wrong. And a lot of people would think, why would he do that? Why didn't he should have let him? Hmm. That's what they did to George Floyd. I saw uh, a, a, a situation where in the moment, a black guy surrounded by a few other people carried, picked up a white supremacist. Obviously, that was out there rioting against him. And, um, because he was getting beat. And he picked him up and threw him over his back and carried this guy to safety and made sure they didn't, the, the mob didn't kill him. Now, a lot of people will call him an Uncle Tom, a Sambo, and a sellout, and all those vicious, mean Coon, those names like that. But I still say whenever we really become one with who we are, really are, I mean, not who we think we are, not who we aspire to be, but who we really are, good, bad, and ugly, then I think it'll be easier to explain to me, in my opinion, why we do some of the things we do. I think we should accept who we are. We can't lose sight of our humanity. You know? We are the mother and father of all living things. All living races. And that's what Christopher Columbus saw when he said, I can take these people because they saw loving. The heart of them is loving. We ain't changed. So don't get mad, first of all, when we do something crazy like that. Because that don't mean we don't fight. And that don't mean we can't fight. But that means it was kind of hard. And only a devil could do what that sh Darren Shaman did. And you're not a devil. And that's why you can't operate like that. Don't be mad because you're not a devil. It's a time and place for everything. It really is. And I think at that moment, whatever decision was made, I have to respect. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I'm not saying that to make any excuses for the protesters. And some of y'all, I know, going to be like, ah, you said what? And so leave your comment below. I won't block it or anything like that. I like to hear all kinds of feedback. But that's what I think. I really do. Um... Because there's nothing but God that would make a person who's been beat down and protesting the way you've been treated by a certain group of people. And then you have, and this didn't happen in America, by the way, so, um, so they, but there's still a legacy of slavery. Not the slavery in the United States, but slavery nevertheless. That's part of our humanity, whether we like it or not, you know? You know, sometimes the spirit of Shaka is evoked. And that's what you see out there on those streets. They, he's, the spirit of Shaka is evoked as well. But even in that, some of us don't lose sight of our humanity, and it's okay. Because that's really who we are. And we cannot allow other people to knock us off our square. So I just wanted to say that first and foremost. Okay. Because I know by now y'all can make the coalition between slave catchers. The overseers. The patty rollers. Um, and our so-called um, uh, police department. 
I know y'all now can see the connection, the evolvement, so to say. So really, um, when people saying that this is hap this has always happened, I want y'all to think about something because my brother is um, a retired police officer. A lot of y'all know that. Um, I have a very, very deep, good friend right now who's head of the uh, sheriff department, and so I'm not anti brothers trying to make a difference. I'm not. But what y'all don't understand, because my generation didn't do a good job of passing it on, and so we need to apologize to the next generation under us and say, no, we may be drunk. Not me, personally, now, because my kids are filled with the knowledge that I, that I know that needs to arm them with to deal with white supremacy. But a lot of my generation, the generation after me, didn't keep the, the thought process going. And so, um, we, you know, a lot of these, how, how can I say, a lot of these um, people think that they've turned up or that they believe that faulty FBI information that says more Ku Klux Klan have infiltrated and I, I think I've even been guilty of repeating that. But I also know that when I talk to a lot of black officers, or like I said, officers from the League of Martin, that's what we have here, which are black officers in that neighborhood that don't have those long lists of shooting people, you know, at all, and don't don't have a history of pulling a revolver to kill anybody in those type of situations. But they've been on the force 15, 16, so in some cases, uh, 20 years about to retire. Hmm. What I've learned is that instead of believing that the FBI was infiltrated by Klansmen, I want y'all to just think, use your brain. Some of us that are a little bit are younger than me. No, it's the other way around. I'm convinced now. Look at all that. Look at the old Indiana and the old uh, movies from Roots or whatever, second generation. You remember the sheriffs where the Ku Klux Klan men? Remember at night they be night riders and then they take off their hoods and then in the daytime they sit behind the desk and be the sheriff. What make you think that's not what's going on today? What makes you think that? Or it couldn't be. So I agree. You got a lot of good brothers that know that's happening, and they're just trying to infiltrate the police department. A lot of good white people, good brothers, and trying to get there and change the culture. But see, what they didn't know is the sheriff been a Klansman, the police chief been a Klansman, or had a, 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 a Klansman ideology for a long time. The politicians have had it. The senators have had it. Just like before. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> it really hasn't. And so when you look at it from a little bit more a realistic approach that you can understand, then you won't be fooled by that crazy a shit show of an executive order that Donald Trump did yesterday for uh, policing. Stuff that was already in the book. Stuff, don't throw all of that out. They cannot, they don't want the corporations, the white supremacists, the white people do not want this stuff to end because guess what? We're a little engine that could. They've been feeding off of us. We've been fueling them. Going through their little towns, picking up tickets. To little towns like Ferguson. You understand what I'm saying? They've been thriving off of us. And you think they want to let that go? You think they want to let that go without a fight? So you got to fight harder. You got to stay out there harder. Because they ain't. You got senators. You got politicians. You got police officers. 
They've been in place for 401 years. But I'm always going to have faith in humanity. Because I know that that humanity is backed by God. And God, they might have some power, but God got all the power. So as long as they stay on in the God and them move, or what, whatever you call it, universal force, the oneness, the one love, the, the oneness, that's the only thing going to break these years and years of yoke. Upon a society. Because this society is running perfect. Like a fine tuned machine. You see how they got the little fancy names. They can't say slave catchers anymore. Or night riders. So they say police officers. Same playbook. So. We have to be um, cognitive of that from seeing us being hung now. The only difference is they're not bringing their kids out there to watch it and taking pictures for postcards. That's the only difference. But they still hanging us. And then to put us in front of the city hall. Come on. Oh, oh, what is that? Something new? No. Ida B. Wells. Listen, they were after her because she kept talking about, I can't take this lynching. Look at some of the writers of Ida B. Wells. And talking about how they lynch us every Sunday. Pick Nick. Pick a nigga. That's where that, for, that term, the monology came from. We're going to pick a nigga on the Sunday to go lynch and hang and barbecue. Roast and let our little children see this. This is how psychotic the mind of that, of this uh, racist uh, uh, demagogue is. So it's evolved and it's all over the place. It's like a cancer. It's a mental illness. And it's spread. And the ones that are bloodthirsty and that love to spill blood. They love to spill black blood. So we have to be mindful of that. And be prepared to fight the good fight. Because it comes a time where that's all you can do. You know? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you out there just blowing stuff up. It just means you out there. And you ain't going nowhere until shit change. You ain't going nowhere. And you're going to use all hands on deck to accomplish this mission. And that's what I think. That's what I think about it. So, to me, there's no different. No different. Rashad Brooks, George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, Sandra Bland. Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Wright. Ain't you tired? I'm tired. Emmett Till. I can keep going on and on and on and on. Enough is enough. And too much stank. 